Hi, this is Arlo Leach, and thanks for checking out my Stage Plot Maker app. This is version 1.0, so by the time you watch this, the app might have changed. But you can always visit stageplotmaker.com for the latest info. First, let's start with the basic functionality. I'll click Stage Plots in the main menu, and you can see that I've already created one stage plot. But I'll tap the plus button at the top of the list to create a new one. The app prompts me to enter a name, and I'll enter Acoustic Trio. An empty stage plot appears, with a hint that I can tap to add an item. Let's do that, and now I see a categorized list of all the items I can add to my stage plot. I'll start with a mic, and choose the vocal mic. When this item appears, I can drag it to any position. I can also rotate it by spinning it with two fingers. Let's put it right up front here for the lead singer. And now I'll add two more vocal mics in the same way. I have three performers, and one likes to use an instrument mic, while the other two prefer DI boxes. So I'll choose an instrument mic from the mics category, and then I'll choose the DI box from the other category. We also need a couple monitors, and we can find those in the Monitors and Amps category. You might have noticed that as I add items to the stage plot, the app builds two lists of items on the top of the page. It puts input items into one list, and everything else into the other list. For example, these performers want to sit on stools, so I'll go into the Furniture category and give everyone a stool, and those appear in the second list. These two lists give the venue a quick way to make sure that all the required equipment is available. By default, none of these items are numbered, but you might want to number your input list to specify which channel each input should be connected to. To do this, you can tap the Settings icon for an input item and enter an input number. And then this number appears in the input list and on the stage plot. Of course, if you number any of the inputs, you should probably number all of them, so let me do that. And by default, the stage plot items also have standard names like vocal mic and instrument mic. But if you want to be more specific, you can enter your own names. For example, we can edit the lead singer's vocal mic and specify that it should be a Shure Beta 58, and now that name appears in the input list. For another example, you could specify that the instrument mic will be used for a banjo. So let's enter banjo mic here, and that removes the default instrument mic label. And now the sound man knows that he should bring earplugs for this gig. Oh, did I say that? Okay, after adding items to your stage plot, You'll need to save it, and like any other software, it's good to save often. We can do that now by tapping the Save button in the bottom toolbar. Most of your work will be on this screen, but there are a few other items you can add to your stage plots that you'll have to set up separately. Let's tap the Back button in the top left corner, and we'll go to the bottom of the menu and tap Settings. I'll enter my contact info here, and then go back and view my stage plot, and now this info appears on the page. Another option is that I might want to include some notes for the sound man. Instead of rewriting the same notes for every stage plot, I can enter these into a list of predefined notes. So let's add one now. These notes aren't added automatically to any stage plots, but I can then go and edit a stage plot, tap to add an item, and choose the notes I want from the Notes category. Let's add a couple. And to remove a note, I can just select that same note again.
One more option is that I can add the name and photo of each performer to help the sound man communicate with the band. I'll go back and select Performers and tap the plus icon to enter a performer's name. I can tap plus again to save the entry, and then if I reselect that performer, a button appears to select a photo. This gives me access to all the photos on the device. And I'm using an iPad simulator now that doesn't have real photos on it, so I just have to pick one of these sample photos. Just imagine that this is a photo of one of your bandmates. After selecting the photo, I can zoom it in, if needed, by pinching, and I can move it around to crop it. It's going to be pretty small on the final stage plot, so zooming in on the face is a good idea. Now I'll go back and edit the stage plot, and then I can choose a performer from the list. So there's the performer's name and photo, and I can position this where the performer is going to be on stage. In fact, let's make these performers stand. We'll take their stools away. I can click the X icon for each of the stools, and those items disappear from the stage plot and from the list at the top. I have some other options here at the bottom that should be self-explanatory. If I want to make a new stage plot using an existing one as a starting point, I can use the Copy button, or I can rename a stage plot or delete it completely. And then over here, I can email the stage plot to someone in PDF format, or print it, or open it in another app, which generates a PDF and sends it to that app. And that's it. If you have any questions, you can click the help link at stageplotmaker.com. I offer email support, and I also have a support forum where you can get help from other users. And you can also send suggestions for new features that you'd like to see in the app. Enjoy!